Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video, and today it's going to be Mitsume Gaturu, also known as the Three-Eyed One for the Nintendo Famicom. This is a side-scrolling action platformer with run-and-gun elements, very much like a Mega Man game, and it is a lot of fun to play. I actually just discovered this game for the very first time this past week. Shout out to Alnonymous over on Twitch, who actually suggested I play this on stream. Uh, I fired it up, and about two hours later, I had this game completed for the first time. Uh, some really tricky parts in this game, but overall, uh, aside from those, it can be a pretty smooth ride. Uh, not too challenging overall, but you do have to be very aware of specific moments in the game that can kill you just instantly. Um, yeah, this game is actually developed by Natsume. It's based on a 1970s uh, Japanese manga, and uh, yeah, I never heard of this one before until the uh, suggestion this past week. So, uh, really glad I fired it up. It's a lot of fun. It's got great music. It's got great graphics. Uh, the gameplay is uh, fairly tight. Uh, if you guys have a flashcard or if you do emulation or anything like that, uh, I highly recommend checking this game out uh, if you're, you know, into uh, sort of running guns and platformers on the NES. It's definitely a must play and I'm surprised that uh, more people actually don't know about this game. Then again, I didn't know about this game and I know of a lot of NES games. So um, yeah, definitely a recommended one. So thanks again, Al, for recommending this to me. Uh, you do have two difficulty modes here, easy and normal. We're going to go ahead and play on the normal difficulty. Uh, Al has told me that the easy mode is basically the same game, it's just enemies, sorry, not enemies, but bosses uh, have less hit points, which uh, might be a good thing uh, for some people. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and play on the normal difficulty mode with the, uh, the high HP on bosses. Uh, so you basically move left and right, uh, you can jump by pressing the A button, you do have uh, variable jump height in this game, kind of like a Mega Man game, which is nice. Interestingly, you can sort of, uh, as you fire, uh, you can actually fire sort of going backwards like this. It's a little interesting. I don't use it very often in the game, but it is something that uh, you should uh, be aware of in case you're trying to change directions in mid-air or something like that. Uh, you can also hold down the B button and uh, charge up this arrow. The arrow will do damage when it's flashing. It will not do damage when it's not flashing. Uh, you can actually upgrade it to so it'll be flashing at all times. Uh, but the big thing about the arrow is that you can actually use it to, uh, you know, act as a platform, and you can also launch it again in the air, like so. Uh, Al actually told me there are some uh, quick kills on bosses, uh, if you can manage to throw the, uh, the arrow into the boss and then step on it and just stay there on it. It's a very difficult thing to do. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that on this playthrough, I'm just going to be showing you some basic survival strats. Uh, for first-time players, and uh, you know, if you want to get more advanced with it, you can uh, you can try that on your own. Very satisfying if you can get it, but very difficult as well. So uh, you do grab money from enemies. Just about every enemy in the game will drop coins of some kind, either small coins or big coins. Uh, one interesting thing that you can do is actually juggle the coins by shooting them again. I try not to juggle the coins on this truck section right here because uh, those those little doggy-looking enemies just constantly jump down. Uh, and so, as I juggle the, the money, usually they just land right on top of me, and uh, that's not any fun. What I'm gonna do is actually charge up my arrow right here and hit this spider just like so, just to, just to get a hit off on him. Uh, watch out for those uh, bandage-looking projectiles. Pretty much all projectiles in this game, almost all projectiles, are bandages. Uh, it seems to be a running theme. I wonder how that ties in uh, to the manga itself. If anyone out there uh, knows, let me know. I did not research it at all. Um, I don't really read manga. But uh, I know there's probably some people out there that uh, know more about this series in general um, than I do here, so... But yeah, it's definitely a running theme all the way up to the uh, the ending of the game, just to spoil things. And uh, so let's go ahead and kill this again, just like so. And uh, I want to go ahead and juggle the coins. I want to try to get as much money as I can in the early parts just so I can uh, upgrade. Uh, my items and whatnot, uh, which we'll, we'll have the opportunity to do that in just a few moments. And uh, so, the, the coins, you can actually juggle up to eight times, uh, and they will shift in size. So it goes one, two, three, four, shift in size, one, two, three, four, shift again. And there's no point in hitting them past the, uh, the, the eight shot. They'll, uh, the coins will upgrade twice to a maximum of 1,000, and then um, that's pretty much it. They'll disappear if you keep shooting them afterwards. Uh, so first thing I want to do is buy this little bird right here. What he'll do is actually pick me up out of pits, which is actually really important. Um, this one right here would be a med kit, but uh, since we have full health, it's not there. 
and we're gonna buy this, which upgrades our arrow, and we're gonna buy this, which upgrades our main weapon, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and buy this one, which also upgrades our main weapon. Sonic is my least favorite, I don't really use it, but I will buy it later on in the playthrough. Um, but we're gonna either switch to Wave or uh, the third shot that we have available. So Wave is actually really interesting. This is it right here. You can actually hold down or hold up to uh, move where it goes. It's actually quite nice, especially for enemies like this that are a little bit higher up on the screen. And uh, these guys, they also shoot fire out. Um, what's nice is that you can actually shoot the fire and uh, make it disappear. So this is actually a section where we want to go ahead and use our arrow to uh, basically act as a platform. And that's about to disappear, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Let's go ahead and use our arrow. Now you'll notice that my arrow is constantly flashing now. That means that it is always doing damage to enemies if it's touching them. And this is a uh, secret bird that you can uncover. He'll actually destroy all the enemies on the screen, and uh, he'll also um, uh, drop some money, just like you saw there. So, uh, if you don't upgrade your arrow, your arrow only does damage on the initial throw. You'll throw it out to the right or left, and then it'll basically rotate back around towards you. And when it rotates around towards you, it turns solid orange, and you can no longer do damage with it. These guys right here, they only shoot projectiles when you're attacking them. And uh, so, you, ideally, you want to attack them when they're facing in the opposite direction. It's a very common enemy type um, that uh, we will see throughout the rest of the game. And so, like I said, this game is a little bit like a Mega Man game in terms of it, in terms of its run and gun action. And uh, you do have to use this uh, almost like the Super Arrow uh, a little bit in Mega Man Five, where you use it to get over a higher platforms that you can't jump to normally. But very similar uh, setup to Mega Man, where you can only have about three projectiles on screen at once. And uh, so you kind of want to taper your shots, just like a Mega Man game. So instead of button mashing really quickly and wearing out your thumbs, you just want to tap, 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 kind of like that. Just keep a constant stream of firepower going. Um, it allows you to do lots of damage relatively quickly, but it also doesn't wear out your thumbs. If you're going mash, 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 like this, there's a huge gap between your projectiles, and you wear out your thumbs in the process, which is never a good thing. So all you want to do is just tap lightly. You're going to kill the enemies in roughly the same amount of time, um, or, you know, you can mash really, really fast when you're really up close to enemies, so there's not really much of a gap between your projectiles. But if you're at a moderate distance away, just tap, 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 kind of like this. Just take your time. Uh, no one's rushing you. Fortunately, there is no timer in this game, so you don't have to just bolt through this. And there are specific parts in the game where you really do want to take your time. I'm going to try to jump through this. That's actually very tricky to do. Which is why you want them to be facing the opposite direction uh, when you try to attack them. Now you have to really watch out for this water. This water is actually really dangerous. It can send you right down into the pit. And let's go ahead and switch over to our third shot over here. Just like so, and I'm gonna wait for these guys to shoot. And then go to the uh, opposite direction before I hit them again. So yeah, this is uh, definitely the first part of the game that's uh, pretty dangerous, that you have to be uh, very careful about. And, uh, but uh, a lot of parts of this game are actually pretty easy. They're actually pretty, pretty comfortable, if you ask me. Yeah, pretty comfortable overall, but yeah, there are some very stressful parts as well, so... You know, you'll play this game for the first time and be like, oh, this game is a cakewalk, and then you'll just get, um, you'll just get crushed later on by spikes or something like that, and you'll just die instantly, and you'll be back to square one with your power-ups. And then that's where things start to get uh, a little bit more tricky. So for this part right here, what I want to do is actually uh, just hop back and forth between these platforms. And I'm not able to because that guy was shooting at me. So again, we want to try to just shoot him when he's facing in the opposite direction. But ideally, you want to just hop back and forth so you can avoid that water. And uh, this is our first boss fight. So what I'm going to do is actually switch back over to this shot right here. Um, but these eyeballs up top shoot projectiles wherever you are in the screen. And so what you want to do is have those projectiles hit the boss, uh, which will stun him. And then once he's stunned, just like so, you can go ahead and do damage. There we go, got him. And I like to use this shot because uh, it'll actually hit him with me just standing uh, on the ground up here on the top. If I have my regular shot, it'll actually just go right over his head. He's not going to get hit by that. Nope. Right, 
There we go. Just shoot my shots that way. And again, just like so. Now, unfortunately, uh, because of how you have to do this fight, uh, it does take a little while to go through. And using your arrow on the boss is actually very tricky, which is why you didn't see me even bothering to, to use it. And you're not going to really see me using my arrow on most bosses in this game. I just find it easiest to just play normally with just my standard shots instead of using my arrow. Uh, if you use the arrow when he's not stunned, it won't do any damage to him, just like your regular shots won't do any damage to him. Alright, so on to Sage 2. A new enemy type is, uh, is introduced here. These guys right here, they actually can't be damaged until they throw their projectile. So you have to wait for them to throw their projectile, which they do when you get close to them. You jump over the projectile and then you, you go ahead and shoot them. So jump, and then bam, 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 it's about four hits or so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just like that. And then again, one, two, three, oops, got it too early. So if the coins uh, land on the ground, they actually uh, track towards you, which is actually kind of nice. Uh, which means that the coins will usually not go uh, away from you in this game. So you don't have to chase them down, which is actually kind of a nice feature. Now if you hit the coins more than eight times, uh, nothing really happens. They just start to disappear. So you, you can only upgrade your coins twice. Uh, up to a maximum of, maximum of 1,000. 1,000, I believe, is the highest coin value in the game. And there we go. If I shot it one more time, it probably would have disappeared. And there's another bird right here to give us some even even more money. I'm going to go ahead and try to juggle these as well. There we go. Thousands of dollars, which is nice. So at this point, when I see my little friend, that uh, the shopkeeper, uh, what I'll be able to do now is buy some extra lives. So you notice I only have two lives right now. And, you know, that should be fine for the rest of the game, but, um, and there we go, it disappeared because I shot it too many times without collecting it. Uh, two lives should be enough for me to get through the rest of the game. I shouldn't, I don't predict myself dying too many times in this playthrough. Um, but it's nice to have that safety net, so I'm going to be using the rest of my money from here on out, as long as I don't die, uh, to just buy extra lives over and over. And there's going to be a tricky part coming up right here, so what I'm going to do is actually throw out my arrow, just like so, and then land on it. And that was not good, so let's go ahead and switch over to our wave attack, so I can shoot upwards. Wave is uh, very good for parts like that, where enemies are either above or below you. Alright, another shopkeeper is going to be here, uh, in just a few moments. So, there are these guys that fly up in the sky, like that, and they shoot lasers directly down onto you. So, what I like to do is, uh, sort of get to safety and then just use wave to attack them. There we go, that's a thousand. You can't go any higher than a thousand, so just collect it. There's gonna be another one right here, just like so. Oops! They can also slam down onto the ground like that, so you gotta really watch out for that. Their attacks are fairly random, so whether they slam down or they shoot down, it's just random, so you've really got to be on your toes with these guys. And so what we're going to do is actually try to use our arrow right here. And we're going to go ahead and jump on it, just like so. If you hold down the A button, uh, when you jump on the arrow, you'll propel yourself up as high as you can. And all you have to do is just keep holding down the A button. There's no special timing or anything like that. Just make sure you don't slip off the arrow too early. So let's go ahead and demonstrate it right here. So you hold down the B button, launch out the arrow, if you don't hold down the A button, you just do a baby hop like this, but you'll notice I can slip off of it. Kind of like so. So, now if I just hold down the A button, this is me just holding down the A button. I'm not tapping it, I'm not timing it. Um, you will do the, uh, the maximum jump height possible. Let's go ahead and switch over to this one. This is a, a really nice shot. And we have to deal with these skeletons, which shoot a, uh, you know, a decent amount of projectiles your way. They always target you, so you have to watch out for them. And there is definitely some fine-tuned jumping in this game when it comes to dodging projectiles and whatnot. 
You gotta watch out for those water spouts because they'll actually push you up into those spikes and then uh, spikes kill you instantly in this game. So be very careful around spikes. Five hundred. Now these little ghosts appear. They always just move to the left or right. They don't target you or anything like that. They just kind of get in the way, and uh, they're they're just tricky to deal with. Notice I'm doing little baby hops here to try to jump over his projectiles, but there are a couple of parts in the game that get overwhelming. Like look at all those enemies that just appear right on top of you with other things going on. So, despite a lot of sections being quite easy, there are a few sections in the game that will just bombard you with enemies and become very overwhelming. These guys that jump up from the water, uh, you need to watch out for them because they shoot these projectiles, and the projectiles go up uh, to the top of the screen, then they try to target you. Uh, so you've got to watch out for those. And we're going to go all the way over to the right here, work our way up this way. This is sort of the intended route, on it, I'm assuming. There are some other shortcuts through these levels, uh, some of these vertical sections, uh, if you use your arrow uh, as a platform. But we're just going to go ahead and use these uh, these falling platforms here to work our way over to the left, and then we're going to work our way back over to the right. And we can go ahead and make that jump. Can't make this jump, though. We have to actually have this platform. Or we could use our arrow. Oops, took another hit. You really gotta watch out for these guys, because, you know, they kind of just appear out of nowhere sometimes as you push the screen over. And if you're not paying attention, you're gonna get hit by their little moon ball. Or half moon ball, whatever you want to call it. Let's just go ahead and use our wave attack. I'm taking a lot of hits here unnecessarily, which is unfortunate. And I don't believe there's another shop, uh... You know, towards the end of this level, so uh, I'm gonna end up getting to the boss with just two hit points left, which is not good, so... But we'll see what happens. I do have a fairly safe strategy for the uh, the boss fight, uh, but this is definitely the most... One of the most annoying boss fights in the game in terms of just how long it takes to defeat the boss. It's got a lot of hit points, and uh, you don't have many opportunities to actually hit its weak spot, which is unfortunate. Alright, so boulders are going to drop down now. I just want to sort of just chase right behind the boulders, just like so. I don't want to lag too far behind, otherwise I'm going to get hit. Just like so, I'm going to drop down like this. Tricky section, but you have to stay on the move and make sure uh, you time things properly. So this is our boss fight. What I'm going to do is just sit over here and just try to hit it with my wave attack. I'm just holding up as I do this. It has a tendency of doing a three-way shot, but it'll also do just single shots that target you directly. And this is one right here. And so when they try to target me, I try to get back, just like so, let it target me, and then I move out of the way. And I just get right back into position and just shoot some more. So you notice that you're, I'm letting my moon shots just basically clip the top left corner of that top platform. And it's uh, fairly tight, uh, but once you find the positioning, it's not too bad to do, consistently. You're really at the mercy of this tentacle arm here. And that's why this boss takes so long to kill. Now he's shooting out two projectiles. Now, I'm just taking it safe here, um, because, you know, when I beat the boss, I get all my health back. So as long as I beat this boss, I'll be fine. Here's another regular shot, just like so. Definitely uh, the most time-consuming boss in the game, if you use this strategy. Now, there's probably a, a quick kill strat uh, that I don't know about. I know people do speedrun this game, and they can beat the game in about 17 minutes on the speed run, uh, from what I've seen, so, um, there are definitely some quick kills on, uh, uh, these bosses using the arrow, but, you know, I'm just trying to show off some of the basic strats that you might want to use as a first-time player on this game. So, alright, stage two down, and just a few more to go. The last, I think there are only about five stages in the game, but the last stage is actually really long, so it might as well be multiple stages. Alright, so these guys right here, I'm going to go ahead and just jump over them, but you can actually sort of push them in the opposite direction. And uh, as you'll see here in just a couple of minutes, a couple of moments, 
Let's go ahead and push this guy over, just like so. And if I really wanted to, I could actually just use my arrow to jump over them, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna go ahead and just use our wave to kill that crab. Remember that you can point it downwards, which makes it pretty much the most useful normal weapon in the game. And we're gonna go ahead and just jump over like that, so push, 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 and then just fall down, just like so. Now, it is entirely possible to, uh... shoot your arrow multiple times, so I can shoot it like this. Boom, just like that, and then jump up, and then launch it again to have a higher platform. So, now look at how high it can jump. So, you can actually use the arrow uh, in a lot of clever ways in this game to get over or get past uh, certain things. I'm gonna go ahead and use the arrow right here. This is, this is a secret. So, here's another bird right here. Go ahead and switch over to this shot. And we'll see if we can uh, max out some of these coins. destroy that. Now, I don't really, uh, have a need for anything, so I'm gonna go ahead and just buy, uh, an extra life, just like so. Everything else is sold out, and so now we're up to four lives. Now, one of the most dangerous parts of this game is coming up on this level, and, uh, I'll point that out once we get there. Uh, these platforms here, you have to actually move up and down manually, so I hold up to go up and down to go down. Uh, they are not automatic elevators. And that'll actually come in handy on this part right here. So I want to get low enough, just low enough to trigger this guy's projectile. And then quickly move up, just like so. And then one, two... Oh, I, I mistimed it. Alright, we're gonna come down here and actually try to stun this guy so I can get past the other one. And we're gonna do the same for this one down here. Just stun him like so, get him locked into place. Alright, I'm gonna destroy this guy right here. If you don't get rid of his fire, just move to the other side or, to, you know, in the opposite direction. Because the fire will basically spout up and uh, it's difficult to avoid it. So you just want to wait for it to time out. Ideally, you just destroy the fire before it hits the ground, but, you know, sometimes that's easier said than done, especially if you're not upgraded. If you're not upgraded, you're, you know, you're using your rinky-dink shot, which is about the size of a small coin, uh, and so it, it can be a little difficult to actually hit enemies with it. Let's go ahead again, just wait for these guys to face the opposite direction before we hit them. Just like so. I don't bother upgrading those coins, it's not worth the time. It only goes from $20 to $50. So, it's not really a huge amount of coinage. Alright, so this is the part coming up here that's actually really challenging. One of the tougher parts of the game. So you notice that these blue things will suck you towards them. Uh, so you really have to watch out for those. But you have to pretty much use your arrows here. Uh, but you have to watch out for these these falling spikes from the top, which is a little frustrating to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and use my arrow right here, jump on it, do a baby hop, just like that, and then this one right here is, is a major pain. you got to time this just right, otherwise you fall into those spikes in the bottom and you die instantly. Alright, so charge, let go, baby hop, just like that. I've died so many times at that part, and I'm still struggling with the timing. Definitely, Definitely one of the hardest parts of this game. So this next section, you really just want to wait around. Uh, you can try to rush through, but it's a little bit more difficult to do. I always take damage if I rush through, so I found that just waiting is uh, the best thing you can do. You can try to shoot these guys to keep them from uh, moving towards you. Just like so. And then this part right here, you just want to get in between these guys. Very tight, very tight fit, but it's entirely possible to not take damage. And this part's a little misleading. This is, uh, you know, you can take a leap of faith, but chances are you're going to fall into an endless pit down here. So you want to just wait for this platform to come on up. I'm going to go ahead and just shoot this guy to get him locked into place. And then we just jump over here. And same thing again, just move between these guys, and here's our shopkeeper. So, we can actually get some health. It's only 100, so always do that if you uh, don't have a full health bar. move on over to the right. Alright, boss time. I want to switch over to my wave attack right here. 
and we want to take out these rocks, um, but the uh, the bottom face, his eyeballs will actually light up, and when that happens, you can actually do damage to him. But I like to just sit in place here with the wave attack. Just like so. Now the rocks do come towards you, but I've got such a large health bar, I don't really care if I tank some hits. I've got three more hits I can take um, without dying, so... And you're not punished or anything for, for taking hits in this game until you die, until it's your last hit. So there's another hit I just tanked. And he's dead. So I just tanked, big deal. It wasn't really skillful play, but it was deliberate play. I knew exactly what I was doing, uh, which is the point. So I have had comments in the past where people say, Oh, look at how many hits you're taking. You call yourself a gamer? It doesn't really matter if I consider myself a gamer or not. Uh, what I care about is uh, going through games with intent. And, you know, sometimes that involves just taking a bunch of hits because I, it's okay. I don't die and it gets me through. So uh, it's just a deliberate, uh, you know, play style choice. So, uh, but it is fun trying to avoid the rocks and having the boss take longer. Um, but in this situation, I'm just going to go ahead and tank them. So this is uh, one of our only auto-scroller sections in the game. Uh, so the screen basically just gets pushed along at its own pace. These little trolls, uh, troll-looking things, you'll notice that they every time you shoot, they jump up. So it's good to try to, uh, you know, jump and shoot them, because they'll just jump right into your projectiles. And you got these fish uh, that pop out of the water. A little bit like Cheep Cheeps from Super Mario Brothers. Uh, they'll do uh, one little baby hop and then uh, they'll, they'll do a large hop, just like so. I'm gonna jump up here, just like so. Otherwise, you can get caught in here by the auto-scrolling section, so... Gotta watch out for that. I've gotten really close to dying there multiple times in my uh, various practice runs. And I'm not gonna really bother juggling coins right here. I prefer to just survive. It's not really a big deal to me. And again, be going from 20 to 50 or 50 to 100, it's not really significant money. What I care about now is the 200 to 500 and 500 to 1,000. All right, so no more enemies. I can just hug the right-hand side of the screen. And uh, the big thing to note here on this section is, uh, you know, the ceiling breaks apart and falls on top of you, so you've got to watch out for that probably the most dangerous part of this section. There's also a couple of more skeleton enemies um, that shoot rapid projectiles. So you do have to watch out for those too. There we go. So don't touch it. Really cool graphical effect though with it sort of like bending uh, as it uh, falls and uh, hits the ground. Nice effect. There are some nice graphical effects in this game. Overall, a lot of them are pretty subtle, but uh, there are some very nice ones, especially in the final boss. The final boss looks really cool. More specifically, the background effect looks really cool. Just squeezing between them. I probably should have just moved all the way to the left, but it is possible to squeeze between them, as you saw. Alright, some crabs are going to appear, and... You can either use your wave attack, or you can get down on the ground even with the crabs and just use your your, uh, your three-way projectile. Just like so, don't have to hold down or anything with these guys. Now they'll lift their claw into the air and spit out projectiles as well, so you do have to watch out for them. Alright, another tricky section right here. So this is uh, another section where you have to really be on point. Go ahead and just jump here, and again, spikes just kill you instantly. But uh, one good trick here is just to do baby hops, and this platform will reset every time you do a baby hop. Now this one right here, you can actually just get pushed all the way to the top and you'll be safe, but this one, you will not. You have to make sure you're doing baby hops, otherwise you will get pushed into the spikes and you'll die instantly. And dying in this game is especially painful because you lose your power-ups, and then 
you know, if you rely on your power-ups, uh, you know, you gotta wait until the next shop before you can uh, get them upgraded again. So you've got these uh, sort of lightning bugs here, which actually are a little annoying. They're very difficult to hit, which is why you want this uh, this three laser shot. Just like so, so you can take them out easily. If you die and you just have your little rinky-dink primary shot, uh, it's much more difficult to hit them. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to take my time here, get rid of these guys. And there's a secret right here. There are quite a few of these over the course of the game. Alright, and our uh, next shop is actually over here, and we don't really need it because we have full health right now. But, I'll buy myself another extra life, put us up to six lives, why not? Give us that safety net. Alright, there we go, everything's sold out. And let's make sure we don't take any hits uh, before this boss. This boss coming up I think is actually the hardest boss in the game. more fish, just wait for them, just wait for them to pop up, and then go ahead and attack them. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with this shot on this boss fight. So the trick to this boss is he shoots projectiles across the screen, and he'll shoot them at whatever height he's sitting at. I'm gonna go ahead and start this fight with my arrow, just like so. So when he's low, he might shoot projectiles low. If he's high, he might shoot projectiles high. And then he turns into more of these lightning bugs, and they have a tendency of going wherever you are on screen. So I want to get kind of close to him. That way the lightning bugs just go where I was when he splits apart like that. You really gotta watch where he is on the screen, too. Oops, took a hit. It's okay, not a big deal. Because where he is on the screen is where his projectiles will go to. And again, he splits apart, just like so. Just like that. That was actually a really good fight. I only took one hit. Normally I take more hits on this guy, but you have to be very, very focused on him. And the reason you want to be close to him, too, is so when he splits apart into the lightning bugs, they go to where you were relatively close to him. Instead of, if you're on the other side of the screen, they'll go all the way to the other side of the screen, and you're going to take damage guaranteed, pretty much. So, which is why he's one of the toughest bosses, if not the toughest boss in the game. Alright, stage five. This is our last level, and it is a uh, very long one. You have multiple bosses and whatnot. And we got these Moai heads. Japan, uh, Japan has uh, a fascination with uh, Moai heads. I'll have to look into why. If anybody knows why, feel free to post a comment down below. But they're featured in a lot of games created in Japan. Most notably, the Gradius series. The long, long running Gradius series. Alright, so we've got three doors we have to go into. They each feature their own sort of mini-levels. And uh, there is some interesting platforming here we have to be very aware of. And I'll point those out once, uh, you know, once we get to them. And you notice I'm not really trying to upgrade my money because it's just not very important right now. I've got $16,000. So this part can be a little tricky right here. You've got these blocks that turn into eyeballs that uh, push you up towards the spikes, so you want to be aware of that and just watch where you're going. And here we go, that's it. A couple more rooms like this. Alright, so this one right here, there are actually two different exits that you can go to. You want to take the top exit if you want to find the next shop. 
and I don't really need the next shot, but I want to go there anyway just to show it off. And just like so. So we'll go ahead and purchase ourselves another extra life. Why not? And here we go. Still have $11,000 left in case I die. So we've got seven lives and $11,000 in the bank. Uh, so we're pretty much good to go. We will have at least one more shop opportunity before we get to the, the last boss. But I... Ooh! You know, one of my practice sessions, I was thinking to myself, that's probably going to happen in the Let's Play. I've never had it happen once. I was like, it's got to happen when I'm recording this Let's Play. And sure enough, it did. <laughs> so now we're back to our little rinky-dink shot, which uh, means we have to have better accuracy when it comes to actually killing enemies. Well, so much for a one life clear. But, you know, not a big deal. It's fun being able to show off some of the interesting ways you can die in these games. Alright, so the goal here is to hit this eyeball, but we have to watch out for this laser barrier that uh, will actually try to corner us. So what we have to do is actually turn around, destroy the barrier, and then jump over just like so. And then we can destroy the barrier again. And again. Jump over like that. And I just wait for the barrier to get to me sometimes. That way I have more of a uh, safety net on the other side when I have to destroy it again. Alright, stage two of the last level. Alright, we're just going to push this guy over just like so, and then just fall down. Now this part uh, can be pretty tricky coming up here. So just push, 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 just like that. What I really want to do here is just use my arrow. And I'm going to go ahead and jump on the arrow, and then jump off, off like that. So just like the blue ones earlier, these red ones, they also suck you in. So we have to wait for this platform, nothing we can really do here. And what's actually interesting about this part is when you scroll into it, it actually sort of auto-scrolls over. It stops you in place. It's one of the only points in the game that does that. Uh, one of the only times in the game that that happens. Which is interesting. Kind of just like stops the flow of the game, surprisingly. It's just a little, little awkward, considering the rest of the game. Gotta go ahead and just jump over this guy. Alright. Now this guy doesn't come all the way over, so I can just wait for him to face the opposite direction, just like so. And we're just gonna go ahead and wait. Alright, so if we take the top route here, we can actually get ourselves another shot. I'm jumping over here just to trigger this guy. To get rid of him early. So I don't have to deal with him when I'm trying to jump on this platform. I'm going to go ahead and throw out my arrow, use it as a platform, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Oh, not enough. But that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and try to kill this guy first before I do anything else. Notice I'm constantly getting sucked to the, uh, the right, so that's, uh, I have to be very careful about that. So one thing I can do here is jump on the arrow like so. Oops, messed it up. Actually, I'm not going to be able to do it. I was going to say I could try to launch it higher, but I keep hitting my head on the platform, unfortunately. So can't get up there, but what I'll do is jump on this platform and jump up here just like so. Go ahead and use my arrow again. Oops, messed that up. And one nice thing about the arrow in this game is that... Um, you know, as long as it's already out, you don't have to recharge it. It just kind of comes right back towards you. There we go. So go ahead and use the arrow. And then jump on it. It's very tricky to land on it. You have to... Because <laughs> it's a moving platform. And it's a fast moving platform, too. 
So, you know, it, it might look like I'm struggling with it. It's because I am. Because <laughs> it's not easy to get the hang of. Uh, and even on my, probably, this is probably my fifth playthrough now. Um, I'm still not 100% with it. So, there's definitely some skill involved with the, uh, the arrow mechanic, which is pretty cool. Not gonna worry about juggling that. Go ahead and just jump over like that. Now as the spider gets bigger, its spread actually gets larger as well. So we want to watch out for that. And always watch out for those little meandering projectiles from the enemies that pop up out of the uh the endless pits. Let's go ahead and juggle this. Oops, or not. Alright, boss time. So I've got my wave attack, which is actually what I want for this boss. It's, uh, it's a very good projectile. I don't even have to jump, I can just hold up and just shoot it like that. Go ahead and just shoot this guy then. Alright, on to stage three of the last level. Alright, we've got these snakes here. They like to jump uh, when you get close to them. You can actually walk right under them. But there's also a secret bird right there which can just take them out for you. Another one of these floating things. I don't even know what you call them. Uh, and no, you cannot use them as platforms when they fall down to the ground. I have tried, and uh, they will just damage you, unfortunately. And the reason I mention that is that they almost look like enemies that would be treated as uh, platforms, because they've got these perfectly flat tops. Yo, he just slammed right down onto me. It's just completely random. Whenever he feels like it. Alright, another tricky section coming on up here, but first we want to go ahead and use our arrow. And you notice that uh, I'm actually letting go of the B button too early, and if that happens, your arrow just goes away. And so if you're trying to hit an enemy or something like that, you really gotta make sure you time your arrows properly, otherwise you will take a hit. And I have been caught off guard uh, plenty of times by uh, releasing my arrow way too early. more uh, snakes over here, just like so. Go ahead and switch over to our wave. And again, baby jumps for these things, otherwise you'll get hit by those spikes. So I'm doing baby jumps and then I'm shooting, then baby jumps and then shooting. Another one of these guys right here. Snipe him from a distance. Take it nice and safe. Oops. <laughs> nice and safe, as in landing on projectiles and, uh, you know, taking hits. Alright, nice little trick you can do here is actually hit them and then come over here to this safe spot and just shoot up, uh, shoot back and forth like this. You have a nice little barrier in front of you, um, blocking those projectiles. Alright, so we can either go to the right or go to the top. The top is more risky, but we can get ourselves another shot. Now there are going to be spikes at the very top of the screen here. Oof! 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 That was horrible. Good job, Austin. Good job. See, I'm trying to not get hit by the spikes up top, so I'm mistiming this. There we go. Go ahead and get that money. Maybe we can get ourselves uh, all the weapons and another extra life. We'll see. All 
Alright, shop time. Don't think I'm gonna need the little bird, but I'll buy him anyway. But I wanna go ahead and just max out all my weapons if I can. Actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, we've got just enough money to buy everything. Now, if we die... Well, we won't be able to go back to the shop anyway. This is our last shop in the game. Go ahead and switch over to our wave. We've got one more boss. One more eyeball boss. Alright, so tricky part right here. We have to actually charge up immediately. And then jump up here. If you don't do that just right, you die. It's pretty much guaranteed, uh, guaranteed death. Up. I keep messing up my timing. Mm. It's not a big deal, um, but, you know, I don't get another health refill going into the- Oh, never mind, I do! <laughs> beating, the, beating that boss gave me all my health back. I didn't think it was going to. Um, but this is the final boss. So, this is a two-phase boss fight. Uh, I'd say the first phase is probably the harder of the two to figure out, but I've got a perfect strategy to show off here. A lot of the bosses in this game feel very random at first, but uh, the more you play them, the more you realize there's actually rhythm and rhyme to them. And the rhythm and rhyme to this guy is every time you shoot him and hit him successfully, fireballs will launch to the floor. And they launch to wherever you are in the screen. So you have to keep pushing forward or backwards, depending. Let's go ahead and switch over to this shot. So I'm going to be taking my shots relatively slowly here. So one, two, three, four and just move over like this. I'm gonna stand right in front of him and just move with him, just like so, so I don't get hit by his uh, projectile here. And just keep moving over like that. And we just go back with it, and just do this over and over and over again. Now you don't wanna hit him too many times, otherwise the fireballs will be landing right next to you as he starts pushing to the left so you don't want that to happen. Very easy to have that happen, and just get pinned by him. No more shots. Can we make it? Okay, just barely. I was getting cocky there because I thought he was going to die. I thought his health was low enough to die, but nope. And that's why you don't want to just pummel him over and over. You want to have a, a good strategy. And this goes right into our final boss. So he can either be yellow or blue. When he's yellow, you can do damage to him. And he always likes to jump up and dive right towards you. He also shoots out this wave attack. And when you do, you want to just pummel it with projectiles so it gets pushed backwards. And when he takes a certain amount of damage, in his yellow form, he turns blue. We do a varied version of the dive kick. So you kind of want to get near him, and then just move out of the way, just like so. And this is actually bad, I'm going to go ahead and take a hit. No way to avoid that, unfortunately. Please dive. Dive! Nope. There we go. Now dive again, I'll just walk under him. Now get back, and then shoot! Jump over his uh, electric beams. And then more the same. Alright, get over this way. Shoot, shoot, shoot! I was not expecting him to do a, a dive attack in his yellow form. But yeah, not a great final boss fight, uh, but you kind of get the idea. That's all it is. There aren't any other patterns or anything like that. So as long as you learn the patterns, you can get through the boss pretty consistently. Uh, but that's it. That is uh, Mitsumi Gaturu, uh, the three-eyed one for the Famicom. We just beat the game. So yeah, that took us about 50 minutes, uh, which is pretty typical. I guess technically 45 minutes, because we had a couple minute long intro. 
Um, but, uh, yeah, really, really fun game. If you guys have never played this before, I highly recommend checking it out, uh, especially if you're a fan of Mega Man-style games. There aren't a lot of what I would consider to be Mega Man-style games in the system. Um, this one is yeah, about as close as you get to the, the, the formula in terms of the, the actual run-and-gun action. Um, you know, you do have mid-air control and things like that, variable jump height, you can shoot three projectiles on the screen at once, you can also taper them and spread them out just like you can in a Mega Man game. So very similar uh, game mechanically. Obviously you don't have boss um, weapon stealing or anything like that, but you do have some shop upgrades and things like that. So it's uh, it's very fun if you're into you know, you know sort of run and gun action platformers. Uh, very good game, great graphics, great soundtrack. Um, yeah, I'm uh, surprised more people don't know about this one. But uh, you know, thanks again, Al Anonymous, for recommending this to me. Uh, it's nice being able to show this off on my YouTube channel. So hopefully more people find out about the game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you can probably find them. I'm not sure how much they go for on eBay for actual Famicom carts, but, uh, of course, you can use a flash card to play it. You can also use, you know, uh, find a ROM and play it in emulation or something like that. Uh, but however you prefer to play, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a fantastic game and uh, definitely well worth playing. Uh, so, no other difficulty modes as far as I'm aware. I don't know of Chico's. I haven't looked, uh, looked up you know, any of that information, unfortunately. So if any of you guys know if there, there's anything else to the game that uh, we haven't been able to show off, feel free to um, post it down in the comment section below. And uh, if you've played this game, if you've known about it for a long time, uh, let me know as well. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the game. And uh, just out of curiosity, if you're brand new to the game as well, also share your thoughts. Let me know what you think of what you saw here. And uh, for those of you guys that actually do decide to play it, uh, hopefully the video has helped you with strategies and things like that. Um, it is kind of a tricky game at first. You know, there are a lot of easy sections in the game, but there are quite a few uh, tricky moments as well that will catch you off guard uh, if you're not careful. So. Yeah, lots of moments that'll that'll catch you off guard if you're not careful. But if you if you know the strats, you take your time, uh, and you don't rush through it, uh, you can get through it. You can start to get through it pretty consistently. So these last few playthroughs I've done in particular, I haven't really had many issues. Uh, the uh, Egyptian themed level uh, is probably the toughest for me in terms of uh, the platforming because it requires you to use your arrow uh, in a very strict fashion, and that can be uh, very difficult to deal with. So, but, uh, yeah, most of the other parts of the game aren't too bad as long as you take your time and you kind of know what's, what's coming up. Some of the bosses are difficult to learn, so a safe state practice, especially on the final boss, is, uh, you know, definitely useful if you're, if you're that kind of player. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for me, guys. If you have any other questions or comments or anything like that, as always, post them down below. If you're new to my channel, subscribe. I've got lots of Let's Plays and uh, many more to come. Uh, if everyone already subbed, thank you for your continued support. Uh, if you're, you're blah, blah, feel free to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, and until the next one, guys, take it easy.